everybody. It's Wendy, and today we are going to make a necklace using the Jesse James Fire Whirl bead strand from the Pantone collection. So, yeah, this is a really beautiful strand. Um, you're going to need two strands if you want to make the exact same necklace that I am going to do, okay? So, first of all, our um, encouraging word for today is stay positive. That's a good word. I know that um, people who have positive attitudes, I think it's a scientific fact that they stay healthier. So that's a good reason to stay positive, right? Okay, so if you want to make this necklace, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need one of these really cute little elephant beads from the Pantone strand, the Fire Whirl strand. You're going to need four of these larger rondelles. You're going to need four of these really pretty... Um, I think these are called like Tibetan style beads. They're beautiful. I've got two of these um, spacer beads and I may use the other two, not sure. And I'm using all of these smaller opaque rondelles. So there's three, there's eight of them. Okay. And then I have a Jesse James, really beautiful magnetic rondelle, or not rondelle, rhinestone clasp. We're going to use that. I have four cord ends. And these are smaller, but they're about, looks like about nine centimeters, eight centimeters, something like that. So there's that. You're going to need four of those. Um, you're going to need some jump rings, and I've just got a couple different sizes here. I've got a couple of six millimeter, a couple of eight millimeter, and a few four millimeter. You're going to need all of these really pretty bead caps, and I'm using all of the little, um, Daisy spacers out of there too. I've got these really pretty double bead caps. I think these are just gorgeous. So I'm using four of those. Um, I have a couple of these little, these little spacers. I actually have flattened one because the bottom of this elephant has a pretty big hole and we need something to put there to keep the eye pin from going through or the head pin from going through and I don't want to use um, anything that's really going to show. So this will be, it's flat and it will be very um, inconspicuous hanging under there. Okay, so I flattened one out. The rest are kind of curved like this. So we'll be using some of those, not sure how many, um, but I pulled some of those out. Okay, I have a big ring. This is from my um, own stash. It's just a ring. If you have wire, you can create a ring with wire. You can use any ring that you have, um, but it's just a ring. One closed ring, and then I have two smaller closed rings. Again, from my own stash, just, um, just rings. That's all they are. You can use anything. You can use jump rings, big jump rings, if you wanted to. Okay, I have one and a half millimeter leather. Okay, and Jesse James has all kinds of leather um, on their website, I do believe. I will put some links in the description box below, but um, yeah, this is a one and a half millimeter leather. It's in a red color, and I just thought it looked really pretty with this other stuff. And then I have a bunch of eye pins. Okay, we're going to be making a bunch of connections. So I've got a bunch of eye pins over here. So just whatever eye pins you have will work. And I think... I think that's everything <laughs> and your jewelry tools, of course. So go ahead and grab up your stuff. Come on back and we're going to make a necklace. Okay, so I'm just going to scoot all this out of the way. First thing we're going to do is work with the pendant piece. So I do have a fairly large head pin here. I'm sorry, I didn't mention head pins, did I? But this is a fairly long head pin. Let me see how long this head pin is. It is three inches. <laughs> And you're going to need a kind of long one if you want to do this the same exact way that I'm doing it. Um, you could do two together, but um, I wanted to just do one. I didn't want to have to do two. So I'm going to take this little flattened, and I just took a hammer and flattened that on the floor <laughs> or on the desk, however you want to do it. It just needs to be flat so it will keep this little elephant from coming off of there. And see, it's going to be um, not noticeable. You could use a clear seed bead or that's what I actually had pulled out at first was a clear seed bead and then I changed my mind and decided to go with that. Okay and then I'm using one of these rounded ones on him kind of like a little saddle. If you can see it looks like this and then I'm just going to use one of these red beads, red rondelles, the smaller ones. This really cool, I love that bead cap double bead cap thing there and this one just like this okay and now um, I kind of wanted to pull out just a little gold bead 
any gold bead, um, just a little spacer bead to put on here, but I couldn't find one. I thought I had some, but then I couldn't find one. So um, I was looking through. I've got a little container here full of just odds and ends little beads. So I just found a little gold bead to stick on there just to kind of top it off. I don't know. I just wanted something there to kind of give it a little, makes it look final or finished. <laughs> finished. That's the word I'm looking for. So let me put these beads back out of the way. Okay. And now we're just going to make a loop and we're going to make a wrapped loop, I believe. I'm kind of doing this as I go. I've got the idea in my head again, like usual, but I haven't done this yet or I wouldn't have the beads to do it with. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make this a 90 degree bend right here. Then we're going to take our round nose pliers and we are going to go up and over. Rotate your pliers up and come right on around and that gives you a little loop there on the top and I'm going to hold that loop with my pliers and I'm going to take my other plier actually I want to make this loop a little smaller I'm sorry so if you do this and you're like oh I want that to be a little smaller just straighten your wire back out go down lower on your round nose pliers <laughs> that's what I didn't do and go up and over and around and you can make it smaller so I just didn't want it to be quite that big. There we go, that's better. All right, and then we're gonna take this and we're just gonna wrap it. And I'm just gonna go around several times, three or four probably. I like the look, it gives kind of a boho feel. And it's also securing your beads on there. Okay, so I've gone around several times. I'm just gonna take my cutters and just trim that right off, right there. Okay, and then I have a little bit of a snag sticking out, so I'm just going to take my pliers and tuck that just so it doesn't catch on anybody's clothes or skin or whatever. Okay, so there's our little dangle. Super cute. And we're just going to hang him from our ring. Now, if you have a, um, like, just a wire ring. Mine has a little hole in it right there, which is convenient, but if you don't have a hole in it, you can just um, hang it directly from the top here because this is going to go on our wire or on our connections, and um, you could do that, or you could even wire it in there, okay? Wire it around there. So I do have a hole in mine, so I'm just going to go ahead and hang it with a tiny jump ring. But like I said, you could wire it on. You could... You know, do just about anything. You could take your, um, when you make your loop, and just go ahead and put your loop through here, and then it's already on before you wrap it completely, complete your wraps. You could just put your loop right through there, or right around here. Okay. Either way, it all works. And I wish I could get this through. This is fiddly. <laughs> kind of hard to hold the ring at the same time as I'm trying to close up the jump ring. I need one of those third hand things. I almost bought one the other day and then I was like, ah, I don't know that I'll use that, but I probably would. <laughs> yeah, this is tough to get to get it on there. Try three. It will go. I mean, it's not that the jump ring doesn't fit. It fits. It's that I can't seem to coordinate myself to get this together. There we go. All right, and get it on there, get it closed up real good, and there we have our little elephant hanging in the middle. He's really cute. Now you can turn him which way you want him to go. I just, I don't really care. Either way, he's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna make some dangles, or not dangles, but connections to put up the side of our little, little pendant piece that we've made, okay? So I think what I'm gonna do with these I'm going to pull out these bigger ones because these are the ones I'm going to use the bead caps on for sure. Okay, then I've got the these. I'm just going to kind of separate everything here into little piles so I can see what I've got. And I've got these guys. There's another bead cap. And then these, which are really cool. I've got these rings here. And these spacers. I may not use those spacers. I'm not sure about them, but then we can get all this out of the way. Okay, so you're going to need your eye pins. Grab your eye pins. And we're just going to make some little connections. So 
I think what I want to do is do a bead cap facing away and a bead cap facing toward the bead and then the bead. Yeah, that may not work. I really need a couple more little spacers. Let me see if I have some more of those little beads. You can use any spacer bead that you have. I do have a few more of those. I think these will help this. Um, I could use these on there, but I don't really want to. I want to save these for this. Let me see how many of these I have. So there's one, two. I've only got enough to do three of them anyway. The fourth one's on here. So probably only going to do two. So I do have two of these left over. So let's look here. It does look better like this, obviously. But I've only got enough of these to do one, so that's not going to work. Okay. Let's rethink this. This is what we do. <laughs> we rethink it when it doesn't work like it should, or like we want it to. All right, well, I guess I'm just going to do it normal. I'm just going to put these beads on here normal, like this. I really like the idea of the backwards. I just thought that was kind of cute. We'll put this guy on. And then we'll go ahead and make a loop. Now with these, I'm not doing wrapped loops. I'm just going to do regular loops. And I'm not going to make them huge. They're going to need to hook together. And the first one that we put on here is going to have to hook onto a jump ring to go on this ring. I did just do a wrapped loop, didn't I? Did you all see me do that? I just said I wasn't going to do a wrapped loop. And then I just started to make a wrap loop. Let me grab, let me redo this one. I could just straighten that out, but I'm afraid my loop's going to look wonky then and it's going to show because I won't be wrapping over it. So let me make sure that I do that right. Yeah, okay. Let's do this again. Okay, put this back on here. I'm not thinking. I was like, I'm not going to do a wrap loop. And then I did, tried to. Okay, bend this 90 degrees. We are going to cut it right about here. And we're going to roll this up and just make a loop. There we go. That's what we want. Okay, let me scoot some of this stuff out of the way. I can't stand working with stuff everywhere. It drives me nuts. All right, let's make another one for the other side. Okay, so here we have it. Ninety degrees. We're gonna roll our loop back. Okay, there's our second one. Now we do have, let's see, I know I want to use these like this. I really like that. I think that's super cute. I've only got one. No, I do have two of these left. Okay, so, and I do have some bead caps here. And one of the, a couple, one of each of those. Okay, so let's see what we got. So, on this one, I think I'm just going to do it as its own link. I debated adding this other one on, but I think I'm just going to do it as its own link. So getting these little head pins, if they're bent at all, it's kind of hard to get them to go through this. So let's see here. I love these. I think these are so pretty. There we go. There we go. Yep, we're just going to do it by itself, just like this. Again, just making a regular loop. Okay. And roll this right back. And do one more for the other side. I'm trying to pick out my thicker head pins here, or my thicker eye pins. Um, I have them all just kind of jumbled together. Yeah, I don't know why these are hard to get through sometimes. I may have to take a beating. Oh, there we go. It went. Okay, just like that.
And I do save all of the little pieces of wire that I clip off of these head pins because you can use them for other things. You can make little ear wires out of them. You can do all kinds of things. Okay, so there's those two. And I guess with these right here, I'm just going to do the same thing that I did here. And then with these, I'm just going to put them by themselves, or I may put them with these. So let's go ahead and do this. So we've got a bead cap, the bead, bead cap, and this guy. Okay. And one more of those. Bead cap, bead, bead cap, and then our metal bead, just like that. Okay, we're just going to roll this back. All right, now, these guys and these, I think I'm just going to do them just a spacer, and then this guy, and then a spacer. Do I have enough to do all of them? I do, just enough. Okay, so we're just going to do this. That's a little long still. You could use chain for this as well. I did I did debate. Jesse James has this really pretty chain on their website. Um, but I just really liked the, the look of the red leather. I thought that was pretty cool. And so that's what we went with today. But you could do the chain. The chain would look just as pretty. And I'll put a link to that chain as well if you want to check it out. It's beautiful. Again, just making regular loops here. Whoops, that one's up a little high. I lost my spacer bead off there. Just trying to let go of the piece of chain and I let go of my spacer bead. Or a piece of wire, not chain. Goodness. All right, and one more. No, two more. Sorry. Two more. I love this boho. This strand was very, very boho. Um, and that's my thing. I love boho style. So. I just thought that it was so pretty. And I love the little elephants. Who doesn't love elephants? Elephants are so cute. All right, and last one. I love giraffes too. I love elephants and giraffes. I used to collect giraffes, but somewhere along the way I quit. <laughs> but they're really cute. All right, here we go. Roll this one back. Okay, so here's all our little beads. What did I save these for? Did I have a reason for saving these, or did I just forget about them? I don't know. We'll, we'll use them. Okay. We might use them. We might not. <laughs> I think I forgot about them. Okay. So here we have it. Here's our pendant piece. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hook these onto here with jump rings, and then we're going to hook them all together. Okay? So I have to decide, kind of, do I want this red one to go that way? You just kind of need to figure out how you want them to lay. So, I, kinda, I think I like the, the metal here first. And then we'll do these. And this one. And that leaves another one of these, which we could do this way. Or this way. And then another one of those. Hmm. 
I like it like that. Well, I kind of want to end with this one though, like this. So let's see how we can we can do this. Yeah, that works. Okay, just like that. Now, if you want to hook this whole thing together using jump rings, you can. I'm not going to. I'm going to jump ring them to the main pendant piece. And then I'm going to jump ring the end of them to these rings. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just attach them all. So we're just, like I said, we're going to jump ring this one to the metal pendant piece. And I kind of like to lay them flat to do this. I mean, I know I just picked this up. I said that and then I picked this piece up. But like this I kind of like to have them laying like I'm going to put it together I just feel like it makes it go together a little bit better and this jump ring may not be big enough I may have to pull out a bigger one for this piece yeah it's not gonna be I mean it definitely has to go up here at the top that bottom is wider so this may work Yeah, I think it will be. We'll see. If it binds up, it is going to bind up. Okay, let me pull out a little bit bigger one. That one's not going to work. So sometimes when you're working like this, um, things, things happen. So let's just pull out a little bit bigger one. I don't want it to bind up on there. If it does, it's just going to be a pain when you try to wear it. And it'll be a um, constant problem. <laughs> We don't want that. Nobody wants constant problem, right? I'm trying to find two of the same jump rings in my stash here. There we go. All right. So these look a little bit bigger. Let's see if they will work. And I know I've got mixed metals here. I have golds in different shades, and I've got antique bronze, which I like to do that. I like mixing them up. You don't have to if you don't want to, if it bugs you. I know it bugs some people, but I think it's pretty to mix the metals together. All right, now let's try this on here. See if it'll work. Stay up here at the narrow part. And close this guy up. Oh, goodness. I'm so uncoordinated, I swear. <laughs> I really am. I am in everyday life, too. Like, I trip over everything, and I'm just not graceful. I wanted to take gymnastics as a child, and my parents were like, nope, you'll really hurt yourself. <laughs> they wouldn't let me do it, <laughs> which they were probably very right. <laughs> okay, there we go. I am not naturally graceful. Not one bit. All right, and I'm just trying to make sure that have two jump rings that match. I think I do. All right, so let's hook this other one on. Okay, so here we have our two little um, connections hooked right onto our pendant piece. Okay, so this is this is how it's going to hang when it's on your body. You know, it'll kind of spread out a little there. Okay, now I'm just going to hook these to each other. I'm not going to worry about hooking these with jump rings. Um, I'm just going to open these little connections and hook them to each other. Make sure they're closed up really good. That's what's important here. because you don't want them falling apart on you. Okay. And I'm just gonna hook these all together. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna hook this little connection right onto this ring with a jump ring. And I'll show you here in a minute, we may have to turn some things or straighten some things out, but for now, let's just get them hooked on, which again, 
It's hard for the dexterity challenge like me. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. I did actually, um, I don't know how many of you have been watching my YouTube channel for a long time, but I told my story a while back where I had a broken neck and was paralyzed from the neck down from a car accident. And so I lost like all the feeling in my hands for a long time and I had to learn everything over again. So that is one reason that I have trouble with these tiny little, the dexterity part. I still have some nerve damage and stuff and um, makes the teeny tiny stuff a little bit hard for me, but I'm just thankful that I um, have no real lasting effects from that accident and um, can walk. They told me I'd never walk again, so yeah, thankful to God for uh, his grace and mercy. All right, so there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? It turns out really cute. Okay, let me get these other ones out of the way. Now we're going to hook our leather on. So we're going to use these little pieces right here. Now, you need to measure this on yourself. I have a um, cheat sheet. So for me, I'll tell you how it is. If I'm making a Y necklace, like, you know, they're meant to be kind of long. This is not a Y necklace, or I don't think it is, but um, I would make it 35 inches to the Y and then the Y would obviously hang down a little longer. A necklace up around my collarbone, like a really short one, I like 24 inches. A little longer than the collarbone, which is where this one falls into the, that category for me, um, is 27 inches. And then a tassel, which is really long, is 41 and a half inches. So that's just me. You can measure yourself and find, you know, what you like and what works for you. So I know that if I want this to be... 24 inch total because I, I just take a piece of cord or whatever and I put it around my neck and I measure it where I want it to hang and then I know to divide that in half so I need 12 inches per side basically is what I'm trying to say here so what we have here and I'm not really going to measure the pendant part I don't know maybe I should let me look at this let me hold it up yeah I don't want this to be real long because it's going to look weird if it hangs long so okay so yeah, I am going to measure the pendant part. So let's lay it out like it would go. And then from the bottom of my pendant to here is eight inches. So I need four inches of leather, not counting my clasp, which I don't usually count the clasp. Um, I usually just, it, it's so minimal unless you're using some kind of huge clasp. So I'm going to do four inches of my leather. So we're just going to measure four inches. And we're going to cut it. And I know it looks teeny tiny, but that's how I like it. I don't want this to be really long. If you wanted more of your leather to show, you could obviously do less beads. Okay. All right. So now we're just going to hook our leather on here. So we're just going to take our little fold over cord in here. And I like to just lay the leather in it and try to grab it with the very tip of my fingernail right here. Um, I don't want much to be sticking out that top part, just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to take, I've got some bent nose pliers here, and I'm just going to fold this in. Okay, so you fold one side over. Make sure it's folded down pretty good. And then you're just going to flip it around and fold your other side over. Okay, just give it a good smash down and there it is it's very very secure you don't want to smash it down so hard that you cut your leather though so be kind of careful about that but um if you just press it down firmly it, it's it's good to go it's got a little tooth thingy right there on the end too so it kind of grabs it anyway you don't have to smash it super hard but you do want it to be firm okay so then I'm just going to do this one, same thing, and there we have it. Okay, so there's my two little pieces. Now I'm just going to take my small jump rings, I've got these little tiny ones, and I'm going to hook it on. Well, you know what? I'm not going to take these little tiny ones. It's going to have to be these bigger ones, and actually I'm probably going to have to go even bigger because these rings are kind of thicker. So I just don't want it to bind up, that's all. So I want to make sure... And I get rings that are just not going to be 
catching on every, you know, I don't want them catching and making it hang weird. So let me grab a couple bigger ones out. Like those two right there. And I thought, I mean, when I pulled these rings out in the beginning, I honestly did think that they would work. <laughs> but the more I look at it, the more I'm kind of like, eh, those don't look so big. And that ring looks bigger. So I just want to make sure that I get good ones that aren't going to, they're not going to bind up. And they need to be kind of thick too. So keep that in mind because, you know, this is like the main connection where your necklace is going to come together. So you want it to be, you know, you want them to be a little bit thicker, not these really teeny thin ones. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're just going to take it and hook it on. And this one, I mean, I maybe could have used a smaller jump ring, but I kind of like the look too. It get, it gives a little, um, normally I use the smallest jump rings I can find, but with this boho look, I kind of like it to show a little bit more. I think with the boho look, you can get, re you can get by with more like rings and um, messy wraps and stuff like that. And I'm making sure that when I put this on that the front of the fold over is in the front. It's laying like that, like the front part. You're, you don't want the back showing where you folded it over. So see what I mean? Just the front part. Okay, so here we have it. Now we're just going to attach our clasp. So I've got two small jump rings for that. And these should be just fine because these are smaller. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to take our little fold over. I want to make sure that I put the front in the front like I did there. Yeah. Okay, so just flip it over. Hold it with your nail and fold down. This can be a little tricky. And fold this one down. And I don't know if I mentioned you can put some glue in these if you want to. I don't. I don't think, especially with this millimeter leather, I don't really find that necessary. These grip the leather just fine. If I was doing something really thin or you know really delicate, maybe, but these seem to do just fine on this. And I'll have that one in the. I'll make sure I have the front to the front, and the back to the back. Okay. Okay, again, just folding it over. And then if you have much sticking out, you can trim it off with your flush cutters or whatever you have. There we go. So there it is. Now we're just gonna attach our clasp this clasp was so pretty. It's really cute little rhinestone magnet clasp. I'm just going to stick it right on there. You can hear my pliers squeaking. <laughs> this set right here, it squeaks. I need to get some um, 3D40 or something to stick on there. <laughs> One lady was like, I thought it was a baby crying. No, <laughs> we don't have any babies here. <laughs> Not anymore. Okay, so there it is. There's our little magnetic clasp. Okay, so here is our whole necklace. And if we come in close, you can see our little elephant pendant piece. So cute. And then we just go on up with our beautiful Jesse James beads and medals to our rings and then our leather. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and um, like and subscribe to my channel. Um, that would be great. And I hope you uh, have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.